G'day, I'm Beth Fulton and I'm going to talk to you today about some Australian examples of linking Atlantis with stock assessments. First of all, I'd like to acknowledge traditional owners of the lands that we meet on today. Here in Lutrawida, Tasmania, that's the Muanina people and I pay my respects to the elders, the past and the present and to the Aboriginal Tasmanian community of today who are the custodians of this land. So a lot of the work that I've personally been involved in in linking Atlantis with stock assessments has revolved around a big model in the southeast of Australia called Atlantis Southeast or Atlantis Catch Cost Risk. So Atlantis SE or Atlantis CCR. It has 71 odd boxes, five or six depth layers. It covers about 3.1 million square kilometres of the Australian southeast ecosystems. It's fed by multiple currents from sub tropical to subpolar and has quite an extensive food web coverage from inshore shelf areas through to deep waters primarily represented through functional groups but with about 15 species specific groups included as well which are the main fisheries and conservation targets in the region. The assumed stock structures are the same as used in the assessments with multiple size and age representing this model, which is a bit of a computational load compared to most other Atlantis models. But it does mean we can more smoothly interchange between the assessment approach and the Atlantis way of representing life histories. It gives a much more varied realised diet and allows for phenotypic variation, which is great if you also want to explore evolution and biodiversity. There's been just as much effort put into the representation of fisheries in this model, including home ports, differing metiers or fleets with their different gears, home ports, vessel sizes. They have their own quota trading mix. Uh, they can have shifting targeting. They can have a different risk preference or profile for the skippers. It covers both state and Commonwealth waters here in Australia. And particularly for the Commonwealth sectors, which are the sectors of most interest to the questions that I look at, we've included social information sharing, but primarily economic drivers of their decisions. We can also represent the data collection and assessment methods, and this is where we end up linking to the single species assessments and, and thought processes. So it follows a fairly classical management strategy evaluation approach, and one of the Biggest uses of it to date has actually been to look at the catch cost risk trade off. So, what's the costs of managing versus the risk to sustainability versus the available catch? So, we use Atlantis as the operating model in the MSE with its dynamic fisheries. We then have data collection, basically sucking out of the arrays in Atlantis the information required to set up the input files for something called SS3, so a single stock synthesis model, which is a way of uh, doing a population dynamics uh, assessment for under a single species approach. That speaks out a recommended biological catch, or RBC, which has various rules applied to it in getting to a total allowable catch that's consistent with the Australian management approach, and then that's what's fed back into the fleet dynamics model to step through the next year. So doing the catch cost risk work uh, about five years ago now, we projected the actual historical trajectory of the fishery through to 2005 and then we projected forward 20 years. We looked at a number of different assessment approaches in line with the different tiers or management uh, levels in Australia. So a full age structured stock assessment is the obvious focus and is where we did the linking to SS3. But we also had to look at ways of calculating catch curves, CPUE based rules, catch triggers, and then effectively ecological indicator based approaches. One of the key parts was representing some of the discount factors and meta rules in place in this fishery, such as the, uh, if there's a change of less than 10% in the TAC, then there's no change at all, but also to avoid really big jumps about. They like stability in this fishery, not just uh, certainty. So if the change in recommended change in TAC is greater than 20% or less than 50%, a drop of half it's buffered back 
so that you don't get uh, large-scale uh, erratic responses. Now, that's done in the actual fishery. It wasn't something just done for Atlantis, but it's a reflection of what they're trying to look at. We also looked at discount factors around the uncertainty in the uh, assessment process itself. <coughs> so the very clear population dynamics assessment had no discount factor applied to it, so the TAC was the TAC. Whereas for Tiers 3 and Tier 4, there were increasing uh, com- increasing constraints applied and so that there was a buffer in there for the uncertainty involved with the assessment. Now in terms of the outcome of that study, it's been published in a number of papers and technical reports, but it basically found that the dedicated population dynamics models can stave stocks in a poor state, Um, but does require a fair amount of investment in both resources to collect the data but also to do the assessment itself. The other tiers, those based on catch or CPOE indices, had very species-specific performance, so it didn't work as well, particularly for chondrichthians. As you go from there into uh, what's called the SAFE approach, uh, which is, looks at the overlap uh, between the distribution of the stock and the fishing pressure, and then on into trigger points and other sort of ecological indicator-based approaches, you find they become less and less reliable um, and so would need quite substantial buffers to, for there to be risk equivalency across all of those tiers. Interestingly, there's quite a strong argument within the fishery about the amount of resources put into the assessment. There's increasing pressure to have less and less data-intensive assessments because there's about 34 species that need to be put under quota and there's many, you know, over 100 more kind of species that are actually interacted with by the fishery. So in doing the MSC, I actually broke out what were the compliance, the research management costs, and the opportunity costs in terms of foregone future catch because you didn't respond rapidly enough because you didn't have uh, a clear enough assessment. You can see that in reality, the uh, more you rely on data poor stocks, the larger the opportunity costs, both as a percentage of uh, the cost borne, but actually in absolute terms, they can be enormously high, those opportunity costs. So in reality, the science is making up much less than 1% of the costs of operating in that fishery. It may look like a chunk as because um, it's a clear line item to point to, but in reality, it's hiding much larger opportunity costs of poor handling of a stock if you go for lots of data poor methods. So the basic findings from that large body of work, which has helped structure the fishery uh, tiers and approaches over the last few years, are that the data-rich tiers are worth it because of the opportunity costs involved. Now, in reality, that hasn't necessarily played out, and there's been quite a reliance on data-poor tiers, without the recognition that that can be a big step up in the associated risks and that you really need to buffer them. For various uh, decisions and other negotiated reasons, the buffers have been reduced in the real fishery through time, um, and that's quite in opposition to what the what the model found. And interestingly enough, that fishery persists in having problems, probably because of a combination of climate and the very multi-species nature of the fishery. So they've asked us to cycle back and sort of repeat the process of linking with the assessments, and this time we're doing it via R rather than a direct hard-coded C-link. That's because they want us to test out a few different multi-species approaches, whether that's pretty good multi-species yield, somewhat in line with the way ICES does it, or an indicator-based approach that's been put forward in other fisheries in Australia as a way of having a data-efficient way of managing quite a large number of species. We're also going to look at the rules that were in place right up to very recent times. So he named the 2020 management rules and then some very sort of 
late breaking news management rule changes that have just been put into place literally in the last couple of weeks here. That's been a really radical change to the fishery with over a 50% reduction in the, the fished area, allowed large-scale closures and things like that. So it's really put a cat amongst the pigeons and we've been asked to look at what that looks like in projection mode. So to do those MSEs has required us linking uh, originally just directly through C programs with things like Stock Synthesis 3 or SS3, but more recently via using R as the medium to create that link with the assessment models and feed the results back into Atlantis. So it now has that capacity and is about to be tested out with Gadget in Iceland. I look forward to getting some questions from you and some insights into how linking with assessment models might be handy for you. Thanks. <laughs>